Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Alternate Table, and in today's video, we're gonna try something new. We're gonna be going into wacky ideologies. Everyone knows fascism, communism, republicanism, and democracy, but not a lot of people know strange things. This one, anarcho-monarchy. So be sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy, have a good one, and let's enjoy this video together. So, what exactly is anarcho-monarchism? Anarcho-monarchism is anarchy with a monarchy. Now, you may be asking, how can that be possible, as they are on the opposite ends of the political spectrum? But, basically, the anarcho-monarch manages to get the king and nobles, and forms an army, and then enforces their rules in an anarchic society, which is how anarcho-monarchism exists. Anarcho-monarchism is an offshoot of anarcho-capitalism, or ANCAP, as it's commonly known by. Now, anarcho-capitalism is where capitalism runs the world. So, anarcho-capitalism is when someone hires a privatized army and uses it to enforce their own rules, therefore creating a anarcho-monarchy. As you can see, the anarcho-monarch flag is purple, while the anarcho-capitalism flag is yellow. So, who exactly gets to be king? Well, usually it would be either the head of a business, as we'll soon see, or usually the man with the most money. Now, this often devolves into who's born rich and who's not rich, or it could be who's earned it. All that matters is who owns the army and to enforce their rules, therefore becoming the narco-monarch and protecting themselves. Anarcho-monarchy can't participate in a large society because it needs a relatively small society, maybe a couple thousand of peoples, to report them to the king in case, say, an anarcho-communist starts coming up and wrecking the capitalist system that created the anarcho-monarchy in the first place. The anarcho-monarch would then take his army down and attack whoever is the person making the trouble or breaking the rules, or anyone for that. But, the most important thing in a narco-monarch society is keeping the army happy. Usually it's a bunch of mercenaries, so whoever has the most money have the most army. This creates a system where wars aren't really a thing, cause why should you take over a place when you can just pay the mercenaries off? But this leads to a system where if your army gets too big, you don't have enough to pay everyone, and they may try and overthrow you with someone who has more money. Another example of a coup would be, say, Jim on the right here has one coin, and Tom on the left has two coins. He can tell the army he'll give him three coins if they just overthrow Jim there, and boom, that's how you change the loyalty of the army, by gaining them more money or promising them more money. But say if the coup fails, which it probably won't, as the army is just an army versus a king, this will lead to a non-violent state, more of just enforcing rules. So instead of an army, more of a privatized police force as anarcho-capitalism's love. So who becomes king after the anarcho-monarch dies? Well, it would usually be their child or whoever they give the wealth to. So if they die and pass on their money to their kids, say, then yes, they get the support of the army because they'll still be paying them. But if not, then, well, whoever has the most money then, because the child does not get the money from it. Even if it's a young child, as long as they're paying, the army is... But is there any example of real life this? Well, yes, there is. The most example, or best example, is Henry VIII. Henry VIII was a king who controlled his army pretty well and kept them happy by paying them more and more. And he had a bunch of nobles who had smaller armies to help you. But you might say, wait, that sounds like feudalism. And we'll get to that in the next slide. 
The problem with anarcho-monarchy is if it gets too big, it eventually devolves into feudalism. To control more armies, you would need more people to control them to get a larger society. So you would need nobles and start paying them, so those nobles can start paying their armies so you get more control. Which is basically feudalism, except with money instead of food. This really hurts the Nerko monarchy, which would divert into them. But what are some alternate versions? Theocratic anarcho-monarchism. Theocratic anarcho-monarchism is when the church controls the money, and once they get the money, the church basically controls the world. This kind of is what happened with the Pope in the late centuries of Europe. By doing this, the church gains all of the power, and therefore can institute certain religious values over other people, and they control the army. Anarcho-industrial monarchism. Anarcho-industrial monarchism is when it's not the person who has the most money, but the person who controls the jobs. Say if you're working into a factory, or a whole sector of factories, the CEO of the company would be the anarcho-monarch, and if you threaten to quit, then you get fired, and you don't have a job, which leaves you powerless. So, basically, they control all of the jobs and industry in the world or country. This can lead to bigger societies, and basically the anarcho-capitalist dream of being run by businesses. And last, if you combine them all, you get industrial and narco-theocratic monarchy, which yes, is a long thing to say, but it's when the church controls all the industry. Once again, they get to put on their theocratic vibes, and this is probably the strongest version of anarcho-monarchism as the church has strong values and controls all the jobs. This doesn't really help the narco-capitalist dream, but more of a and cap conservative dream. So, the problem with anarcho-monarchism is you go from anarcho-monarchy to feudalism to anarcho-capitalism. This leads to a stage of constant changing, and it takes a hundred years or even longer to progress. We're currently in the narco-capitalism phase, slowly moving more and more down to anarcho-monarchy, or pure anarcho-capitalism, and then we'll move on to feudalism again, much as we were back in the old times. Overall, I give a narco monarchy 7 out of 10, due to the fact that it's a very weak system, especially with the wars that would go on, though not the killing, and there's some better versions of it that can be improved upon more and more. And going back to a feudalist society is just not what we want on this channel, even though I am, of course, a knight. So, thank you for watching. Wow, what a great video. Um, thank you guys all for watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know if you like this series, because I was hesitant on making this video. I can make two more, but if this gets popular support, I'll keep on making it if I know you guys want to see more of it. So, once again, thank you all for watching, and remember to have a good one. Goodbye! Wow, what a great video. Make sure to like and subscribe. The video on the right is my most recent upload, which I do alternate histories. And the video on my left, well, that's a video YouTube thinks would be like you. Please don't click it if it's a Spain video. If it's the Spain video, run away. I, please, please, the Spain video haunts me in my nightmares. Bye!